Well, last week we kicked off a, a new mini series, right? It called Boundaries. And I was so encouraged by the response that I received from you all, talking about how the Spirit of God is beginning to bring clarity and encouragement and emotional and mental healing for your journey ahead. Amen? So if you are just joining us, we began to unpack practical, real ways rooted in Scripture on how to create and maintain healthy boundaries. How many of you know God wants you to have healthy boundaries? We understand that boundaries are a good thing, not a bad thing. I'll, leave, I'll go even deeper. Boundaries are a God thing. Amen? And so we're doing that. The reality is that it's impossible to maintain a healthy mind, spirit, and soul, or a healthy you without having effective boundaries. And we have come to understand that the boundaries aren't a bad thing, but these are things there to protect us and help us and to keep us safe. Amen? And healthy. So I'm going to do a quick recap for those of you who are just joining us because we began to learn what boundaries are. And in our physical world, we see them. They're all around us. And even though they look differently, they give us the same message. The boundaries can come in, in forms of fences, manicured lawns, signs that help us to understand you can go here, but you can't go there. They help us to identify and clarify the boundaries. This is my property and this is not. Come on, are you with me? This is what I control and that's out of my control. Come on. This is what I'm responsible for. Are you with me? And I'm not responsible for that. Come on. So we see that in the natural world, and, 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 and in the natural world, it's much easier to understand because we see it clearly, right? We, it, this is important to know because it, life can be confusing if you were living without boundaries and you didn't know what you were required to take care of. But because in the physical world, it is like that. It's very easy to see, and we understand that. But herein lies the question because when it's dealing with relationships with others, these same boundaries aren't as easy to be detected. Come on. And the problem then is that in our relationships, we're living out of bounds. And that can be very hard to deal with and it becomes a burden that you're, you, you can sometimes find yourself taking care of this and taking care of that. Come on. And I think that that's where our mental torment, struggle, hurt, pain, and we're just unhealthy in many of our lives because we are living out of bounds. And so God wants us to get back into that place where we're living within the right boundaries. But then the question comes up, what am I responsible for? So last week, we brought the Proverbs 4.23, which I believe that that specific verse answers that question for us. It says, above all else, guard your heart. Come on, say it with me. Guard my heart. For out of it flows everything you do. Come on, say everything. See, I'm wanting you to repeat it. Just, that's just a fancy way for pastors to keep you awake. It's a little trick to keep you talking because then I know that you're awake. You're with me. But Proverbs 4.23 says it. Above all else, guard your heart. Listen, it's important to understand that what you are responsible is, is for your heart. That is your main responsibility that God has given you. That is your starting boundary. Come on. It's your heart that you, are, you and I are required to take care of. Because as we take care of our heart, every other relationship will, go, will depend upon how we take care of our own heart. You see that? In other words, I have to identify what my lane is. Are you with me now? A, see, you, you have to understand what your lane is so that you can live within your lane. 
See, some of us are living in, in, in several different lanes, and that can be more than you are supposed to bear. And God wants you to have this lane so that you know and live in a place of healthiness, wholeness, and healing. Can I get an amen? And, and another thing we talked about, and you can, you know, go back and, and, and review it, but your, your heart is worth guarding. It is valuable. It's really you. Because at the, at, at the center of it, it's your mind, your will, your emotions. It's everything to do with you. And God is saying, you are important. Oh, this side. Let me try this side. You are important. And above all else, God is saying, guard you. That's your responsibility. Amen? So today we're going to go deeper because the Holy Spirit wants us to be uh, uh, healed and whole and walk into, in, in a place of wholeness and, and health. Amen? Sound mind. A clean heart. Amen? Because then it'll, 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 it'll ooze out into all of our relationships. I'll treat you better when I take care of me. Come on. But if I don't take care of me, watch out. And you're the same way. I'll leave it there, man. So we're taking care of, each, of ourselves. And I want to talk to you about the greatest breach to our boundaries. Amen? Because we're talking about the boundaries. And, and I want to talk to you about today about what I believe is one of the greatest breaches of our boundaries. And what allows the enemy to have a foothold, a stronghold in our lives. I'm, all right? I, this is very important that you get this. Because the tool of the enemy, he, he's very strategic about how he on the outside, gets into our border. And are you ready for it? I'm going to tell you the number one tool that I believe that he uses to get into our space. And it has to do with unforgiveness. Are you with me? Jesus was teaching them how to pray. In Matthew 6, 19, and we're going to talk about this because it's all throughout the Bible, but I just want you, even to, in, the, in the Lord's Prayer, he was teaching his disciples how to, say, to pray. In Matthew 6, 9, he says, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. And Jesus further said this, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. Wow, this is very deep. We got to unpack this though. But what this is showing is that too many of us are living boundaryless lives because you're burdened with unforgiveness. Amen? And see, when you're, when you're burdened with unforgiveness, it's allowing the stronghold to come in and the evil one has access to you. Because you're carrying something that you were never meant to carry. Are you, are, are you with me? See, unforgiveness is a security breach. The enemy is within, just not the fence. The enemy is in, within your heart. And wherever you go, you carry that breach, that toxicity, that poison is in your heart. So we're not talking just about physical boundaries now. Come on now. We're talking about your heart and living with that toxicity and, and giving the enemy access to what is most important to who you are and to you. See, the reality is that you can forgive. 
Because God created you to forgive. See, when he, when he forgave you and he, and he gave you new life, amen, you were created now in his image and you have the ability to forgive. But you choose not to forgive and you choose to hold on to that. And you are paying the price because you are living without boundaries. See, the reality, too, is that forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness is to keep your heart clean. Forgiveness is setting up that boundary that prevents the enemy from being able to penetrate your heart. That no matter what the enemy does against you, no matter what the enemy speaks against you through people, come on, because how many of you know the enemy will use people? And so he'll come against you. But forgiveness will set up the necessary healthy boundaries. But when we choose to latch on to unforgiveness, it prevents God from really doing what he wants to do in your life. Because you're choosing to hold on to that. See, we don't necessarily forgive for them. You forgive for yourself, for us. Forgiveness is that place. It's a boundary that lets good in and keeps the bad out. See, with unforgiveness, there is an open gate. And there is no boundary. And whenever the, 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 the enemy wants to pull your string, he'll do it. He has access to you from the other side. And he knows how to trigger you. Come on now. He knows how to trigger that. From whatever it is that you're holding on to, that toxicity from the past. He knows how to trigger you and, 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 and you'll lash out at other people as a result of unforgiveness. He knows how to push your buttons. But there's good news. There's a place that you can find freedom. Amen. And we want to help you to find freedom today because this series is really about putting up healthy boundaries and about God healing your heart. You know, Peter asked, he was with, uh, with Jesus, and Jesus was walking with his disciples one day. And Peter asked, and he said, how many times should I forgive? Seven? And you remember that. How many of you remember that? And Jesus began to t teach a parable, and this is in Matthew 18. And Jesus answered him with this parable. And he said, there was a king, a kingdom, the kingdom of heaven is like this. He said, it's a certain king who went to settle accounts. How many of you know God will settle accounts? And he was a certain king who came to settle accounts, and he, he got one of his servants, and he brought him before him, and the servant owed him millions and millions and millions of dollars. And the servant was unable to pay. And, 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 and the king said, okay, take that servant, take his wife, take his children, and put him in jail. Uh, and, and the servant got down on his knees and begged and begged for forgiveness. And it said that that king had compassion over him. And then the king said, stand up, I relieve you of your debt. Sounds like a good thing. Come on now. How many of you need a, a, a relief of a debt? And so he got up from the presence of the king and ran out. But when he ran out, the Bible says, and the story that Jesus was teaching says, that he saw someone who owed him a few dollars. And he's, the Bible says he laid hands on him. He grabbed him by the neck and said, where's my money? And that particular individual did not have the money to pay. And so that guy had him sent to prison until he could pay. So guess what? The king who had relieved him 
of that debt, he, of, of the huge debt, he heard about what had happened. And he brought the man before him. He had him brought before him. And in verse 32 of, of chapter 8, it says, Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. And verse 35 says this, so my heavenly father also will do to you from if, if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother's trespasses. Wow, this is big. What we find here is that until we truly understand the debt that God overlooked in our lives, we truly won't have the ability to forgive others. Come on, I'll say it again. Until we understand the debt that God delivered you and me from and we receive forgiveness from him, then we won't have the capacity to forgive others. See, I believe that that's what we, we struggle with sometimes in, in our lives is really understanding what God has done for us. And he, he cleaned your slate of sin. It was something that you and I, we could not and we were not designed to bear, to handle, to live and walk in. But the grace of God and the goodness of God and his faithfulness and his love and his commitment towards you and me, he wiped away your debt. Clear. Boom. And I believe it's when you understand that and fully recognize and, and receive that, you, you, you live a whole different life. Because the way of the kingdom is forgiveness. The way that this king that we serve operates is in forgiveness. See, it's not about how many times, one, two, three, seven, 49. It's not about how many times should we forgive. It, it, it's more like forgiveness is a way of life for you and me. It's a way of the kingdom. It's a lifestyle. It's what keeps up healthy boundaries. It's what prevents the enemy from having access to you. It's the, it's the part of us that it, it delivers the, us from the evil one. That there's nothing attached. The enemy cannot trigger you because you're going to forgive whoever wrongs you. Even before they do it. I believe that that's the place that God wants us to live in. It's a lifestyle that God is asking you and us and, and me to, to walk in. This is kingdom stuff. This is the way the king operates, and he wants you and I as disciples to operate in. But I'm gonna, I want to talk to you about four quick barriers, I believe, that prevent us or are challenges that you and I have to overcome if we're going to walk in this healthy place that God wants us to walk in. And the first one is this self-deception. Self-deception. That what happened to me or what was said to me doesn't affect me today. The reality is that there's some things in your life that have been said to you or things that people have done to you that have been hurtful. Come on. Come on, raise them up. And this, this is freeing. This is freeing. There's been things that have been said over your lives, whether it was a parent, whether it was a, a, a teacher, whether who it, whoever it was, things that have been said to you that were hurtful and you were wounded and you don't got to act like you weren't wounded. I believe that God wants us to be very uh, open with him and go to the Lord and say, hey, that hurt me. What they did, what they said, that hurt me. And you have to acknowledge that before you can receive the healing that you need. Amen? You know, my dad, for many of you who don't know my dad, my dad, uh, he, 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 he operated in unforgiveness for many years. Thank God that before he passed away that he had 
um, forgiven and his life was changed dramatically in his latter years. But for so many years, he walked in unforgiveness and he was he would he would act like those things didn't hurt him, but he would bring them up from time to time very often and he would bring them up as if they happened that morning. And so you understood that the, that the hurt and the pain was real, but then he tried to tough it out and said, but that doesn't really bother me. That doesn't really hurt me or it doesn't affect me. I I, I often would say, dad, it, it, it affects you. Especially when I was up in age when I could say it. it. Dad, it's affecting you. We all know it's affecting you. You'll, you'll bring it up often. You won't forget it. We'll, we'll be talking about sports. We'll be talking about something else. And somehow, some way, it would come back in the, in the conversation. Come. Have you, have you ever had to deal with someone like that? See, they're living in self-deception. See, God doesn't want you or me or any of us to walk in self-deception. If it was hurtful, if it it did you harm, then you need to acknowledge that and you need to take that to the Lord. Say, Lord, listen, this hurt me. What they said, it it, it, it hurt me. It hit me at my core. But I release this in your name. Lord, I need help to release this. I don't want to carry it any further. Today, we deal with it. But self-deception, acting like it doesn't hurt you, it's really hurting you. And not only is it hurting you, but it's hurting all the other relationships that you're going to have. Because it will come up. The second barrier that you, you and I have to overcome to walk in a place of forgiveness is the self-defense. Self-defense, I'm going to get back at them. Come on, revenge. You know, Romans 12, 19 says this, Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that pay to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will pay them back, says the Lord. Revenge is not something that, the, that God wants you to take, take back. But oftentimes, we're having a revengeful mindset. That we're, we're, listen, they hurt me, so I'm, I'm looking for a way to get back at them. And oftentimes, you're not only trying to get back at them, but you're, you're trying to get back at anyone that even looks like them. And if you even think that somebody sounds like them, then you already... You're, you're so defensive, and we all know it. Self-defense. You're going to have to be able to get to that place where, look, I'm, part of forgiveness is laying that down. I am not looking to get revenge. I don't need to fix that. that I put that in God's hands. See, God knows how to take care of business. And he knows how to do it in a right way. Because ultimately, just like God cares about you, he also cares about them. Because you know, if if, if we took care of revenge, it it could look really bad. Tell the truth. But God knows how to take care of them too. Listen, the third thing is this self-image. Self-image is another challenge it's an obstacle it's that barrier that you will have for to 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 deal with for to walk in forgiveness I will never admit that I'm wrong because I did what I did because they hurt me I will never that does that sound prideful there's a sense of pride there listen they wronged you they did you wrong but now you're responding in a way that listen it's not Christ-like but you're not going to, you, listen, you're proud and you're not going to change your ways because they wronged me. And I kind of have a right to be like this. I, I have the right. That's pride. And the reality is that we are at a strongest when we admit the obvious to God and others. We are in our greatest position of strength when you can say, I cancel your debt. 
See, God wants you to operate from a place of strength and not a place of pride. And, and, and the truth is that wherever you're weak, God is strong, so he'll help you to operate in that place of forgiveness. See, church, ultimately, God is wanting to release you of that weight, that burden that you're carrying, that toxicity that you're carrying in unforgiveness. And fourth is self-protection. Because you walk around feeling like you need to protect yourself. I don't want to deal with it. I'm tired. I, I don't even want to go back there. I just want to leave that in the past and I just want to move on from that. But the reality is you can't move on in a healthy place, in a healthy way, unless you deal with it. You, it, it won't happen. You have to deal with it because the enemy has breached your heart and wherever you go, you're operating with him on your back. And you got to deal with it. Is it uncomfortable? Yes. But it has to be dealt with. In order for you to receive the healing that would allow you to go on in your journey in a powerful way, in a Christ-like way, you're going to have to deal with it. Have those conversations. It's this place that you're going to have to learn to trust God. Amen? See, I believe, and the team can come because we're going to get back into worship, but listen, I believe that God wants us to begin to set up those boundaries, those borders of protecting our heart, getting the bad stuff out, and allowing the good to come in because there's so much God wants to do in your life and my life and so that we could move forward. But until we hold on to that poison of unforgiveness, we will never truly be who God has called us to be. You know, I love Jesus. He, he was a great example. Even on the cross, they, the, on the cross, he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. See, I believe he wants that the life that God has called us to, be, to walk in is even as they're cursing us out, even as they're lying on us, even as they're doing these things, that we walk in, un Father, forgive them, because I'm not going to allow the enemy to have access into my heart. Does that mean what they did was right? Absolutely not. Forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness is for you. God will deal with them, but forgiveness will keep you safe. Forgiveness will keep you healthy. Forgiveness will keep you untethered from the diabolical control of the enemy. Now you can keep going. See, I believe, what, what, what does it look like? Listen, some of us have to make some phone calls after today. Have the conversation. Tell someone, I, I, I release that. Because there's, there's power in a, in a place of releasing. There's the healthiness of God that begins to flow in like a flood. Amen. When you overcome those boundaries that I spoke about, and you'll see God come in like a flood in your life, and you can walk in a new place of freedom, healthiness, because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. I just pray that right where you are, we're going to go into that place of, of worship. And listen, whether the person is no longer with us, sometimes people are holding on to things of the past. People are gone, and you're still holding on to that. Maybe you can't call them. Maybe they're not here. Call a friend. Say, listen, this thing has been holding me back, and I just want to let you know that I'm releasing this in Jesus' name. Right here in worship, you can do it. As you lift up your hands, you just release it before the Lord. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, this is between you and God. 
but God wants you to walk away free and to walk in that place of forgiveness and remember and remember that forgiveness isn't about a number it's about a lifestyle that you and I are called to walk in and that's growing up that's the power of God operating in your life 